Hey everyone, it's Jen. I just wanted to introduce you to a new keyboard that I have made, um, and you are more than welcome to have access to it. Um, it's a keyboard that hopefully will help your slides, presentations, do a little bit more, especially during this time of you know online virtual instruction and so on. So right now what you're looking at is this really sad slides presentation that I made probably in one of my first years teaching and it's about World War I. It's not super engaging. I mean, I could torture students and just have this up there and lecture and you know have that be it, but hopefully we can do a little bit better than that. So here's the keyboard. Just wanna introduce you to it very quickly. So I'm just going up to the key set extension and these are all of the elements. So one of the first things that's here is a transparent overlay. So those of you who are working in slides and you're super fancy, you understand the importance of you know using um, kind of the background of those slides and using those master slides, this is kind of the easiest, fastest way to do a master slide. And so what it is, is it's going to go on top of your slide and prevent anybody from messing with any of the things on the slide itself. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. There is some sticky notes because there's always sticky notes in every single environment. There seems to be sticky notes. Um, labeling directions will go over. Um, in just a second, um, image icons, there's a transparent one, there's one with a blue background. The only difference is that the regular one is an eye and the blue background is just a shift eye for your keystroke. Um, lined paper, we'll look at that in just a moment, a brainstorming page, and then different size text boxes. So again, a T or a shift T. So that's what's inside of this particular keyboard. Um, one of the other things I do want to go over very quickly is I'm probably not going to come up here to the extension itself and enable it. You can, if this is what you're comfortable doing, go for it. Um, for me, I'm just much more comfortable usually working with my toggle keystroke. So that's just a key that I've set that will turn my keyboard on and off as I need to. Uh, just heads up about that toggle keystroke. Don't make it a key that you usually use. Like if your toggle keystroke is T, anytime you're typing T, your key set keyboard is coming up and then going away um, and ready to use and then going away. So don't do that. Make sure that it's something a little bit obscure. So mine is super obscure. It's shift and then bracket left, which is kind of the key set symbol that's right there. So that's um, how to set your toggle key. Again, I'm just gonna go find my notebook element Okay, so here's my notebooks. Again, my, I'm not enabled right now. The other thing I do wanna share with you, now this is a pretty short keyboard and for me, like things make sense. O is overlay and in our sticky notes um, and so on. But if they don't make sense or if you, you know, this seems like too much for you to remember, always in Keysight, you can go up and just hit print. Um, so before we get started and before I start kind of using Keyset with this particular PowerPoint or this Google Slides presentation, um, this particular keyboard is best with the size. So if you go down to your page setup, the size that you should be using is that widescreen 16 by 9. So 16 by 9, I'm just applying that as a size right here. And okay, guys, computers are so slow right now because everybody um, is online, at least in my household. Like every single person is using some element that is taking up a lot of bandwidth. So here we go. Um, I'm just eyeballing slide four is a little bit weird. So I'm gonna hopefully again, super slow internet. I'm gonna drag this map somewhere over here. You guys, I cannot tell you how embarrassed I am that you're seeing this particular presentation, but here we are. Okay, so this is all about World War One. so exciting. So um, back to the key set keyboard. So one of the first things is that overlay. So I'm gonna turn my keyboard on. Again, I'm gonna use the toggle key and you can see right here, it tells me that it's on. So on, so again, super easy. And to put in the overlay, all you have to do is you know click O for overlay. So I'm clicking O. And you see how it kind of moved a little bit? Again, that's just this like, just big, huge blank screen that's going on top of this particular slide. And so everything that's behind the blank screen, I'm no longer able to go through and edit or move. So if you're familiar, with slides, you know, I should be able to edit, you know, the um, title slide, and I can't do that. So I'm going to put a couple of overlays on. So again, without the overlay, you can see if I'm just double clicking, I can edit or delete. I usually don't want my students to do that with my slides. So I'm going to put on the overlay. So again, O for overlay, 
and you'll see it kind of lock on um, in just a second. So again, um, so to have that overlay on there, that's pretty good. So overlay is there. Um, it's locked on. Now I can't go through and edit or change things or whatnot. Um, this is actually really helpful if you have something that's a PDF and you want students to interact with it. So you put the PDF in the background, um, then lock it on, or you can build you know, any kind of elements or questions or anything, then lock on that overlay on the top and then just have text boxes there and students can fill in answers using text boxes. So it's just kind of a nice element um, to have as you're going through. Um, so one of the things that you'll see, so here's my overlay, here's my introductory slide. Um, are those sticky notes? So again, I'm a huge fan of sticky notes in like real life environment. We've got sticky notes everywhere. Like even right now, I'm looking at my desk. There's tons of sticky notes all over my desk. So I always want to give my kids ample sticky notes so you can actually give them digital sticky notes. So digital sticky notes, again, um, that is in. So I'm just pushing the letter N for those digital sticky notes. And eventually um, you'll see them appear magically. So here we go. So these are notepads. Students are able to add lecture notes um, to slides and so on. They can change the color. My students always want to change the color and the font and whatnot. Right now, I do want to give you a moment. If you've never used kind of this outside area or this zoom out area around your slides presentation, um, don't neglect that area. That's a great area to include additional directions, um, additional things for students to use. Um, so that outside area is it's there and it's available for you. And so it's just kind of like that pan out. So but again, if you have this particular um, keyboard, like it'll just do that outside area for you. So right now, all that a student would need to do is just drag and drop a sticky note wherever they want. The sticky notes are already ready for you know adding text. Now, here's the thing. I have done this video like a million times. Those of you who have had to record your videos this, um, during this season of life, um, you know that you do, do these a lot. So I've done this a lot of times. And one of the things that always makes me have to re-record is that I don't turn off my key set keyboard. And so I'm going to toggle this one off because if I didn't and I start typing, I'm going to use some of those keys and crazy things are going to start to appear. All of those things that I preloaded onto that key set keyboard, they're just going to start happening. So I want to make sure that I turn it off. So I'm eyeballing um, that extension right there and I'm going to hit the toggle key. Now it's off and now I can type, you know, important information. Um, oh my gosh, you guys, seriously. Typing and talking, not so much. Okay, so important info and students can use that you know, to indicate whatever they need. So this is something that's there for students and it's super great. And if your students have some kind of a touch screen, they really like these sticky notes and it's a really great way for them to label things that are there. Okay, so that's one of the things that's here. One of the other things that's here is this directions page, and I'm gonna show it to you. Again, I've got high school students and I am super particular about what happens with these slides. So directions is just D, so I'm just gonna hit D. And what the, oh, I'm gonna turn on my keyboard and hit D, how about that, instead of just typing a random D. So here's my keyboard on, I'm going to now um, type D. Okay, so here's my directions, and this actually, I like this to appear um, at the very top. Oh, I went to a different slide. Sorry, guys. Um, but I like my directions to appear at the at the very top of a slide. And the reasons for this, so I'm going to just delete this one and put it on the actual slide where I wanted it. So here I am again. So I'm just clicking D. Um, so this is on the original slide. And I push slides to my students in a forced copy. And so what happens for them is it says copy of the Great War. And so I want them to remove the word copy of from the beginning of their file name and then put their class period. And then I also really want them to share it with me so that way I can watch them as they're working. So once they share it with me, it goes into my shared with me file in slides and I'm able to grab them all and just easily put them into a folder um, that I can sit and look at. And again, because this is all occurring on top of that overlay, they're going to then delete after they're finished with everything. I just tell them like, hey, when you're done, just delete all of the directions and then we're fine. Um, so that's my direction slide. So that's there for you in this keyboard as well in case you feel the need to use it. So going through um, a study rise of nationalism. Okay, so 
there might be something I want students to do here. So we've got the great powers of Europe. We're setting the stage for World War I. Um, I might want them to brainstorm, like, what exactly were people concerned with during this time period, during the turn of, you know, the 19th or uh, sorry, of the 20th century. So that might be something um, that I'd like them to do. So B is for brainstorm on this one. So all I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to hit B and it's going to insert a brainstorming slide for me. So you can keep your original styles or match the styles. I'm just going to keep the original ones. Um, and then right now, so they've got a bunch of sticky notes. The background right here is set, um, but the sticky notes can move. So we've got sticky notes that are moving all the way through these brainstorm pages. This is a great collaborative page as well. Um, and students can, you know, group things together, group different reasons together. So this is a page that's part of this particular keyboard. Um, as I go through, again, super boring presentation, yay. Um, we're talking about the main causes of the war. Um, things get a little bit crazy up until, you know, crisis in the Balkans. Um, but let's say that right here, right after we start talking about all of these causes of the war, I want students to do something again. So right now, I'm just going to hit um, P for paper. So P, make sure my keyboard's on, so I was just looking at. So P for paper. And right now, again, I'm just going to keep the original styles. Here we go. Click to add a title. And I'm going to give them some kind of direction. So I'm toggling my keyboard off. Okay, and the directions are find a political cartoon. Ah, you guys seriously typing and recording. Just not my thing. Okay, so I'm, we're going to pretend this says something genius and amazing, but it's, you know, find a political cartoon about the beginning of World War I and describe, you know, the key elements of that cartoon. So here we go. I have this cool background. All I had to do was just push P. Um, backgrounds here. I've got some directions. I want them to be able to interact with this somehow. So I want the cartoon on one side is kind of how I'm envisioning this. And then on the other side is a description of what the cartoon is. So I'm going to use those image ones. So I'm hitting shift I. So I've got the one with the blue background. So I'm going to um, turn on my keystroke. So shift I. Now I've got my blue background image. This is where I'd like their image to be. And um, then I do need to have some kind of a text box. So, and I'd like my font to be bigger. There's different size fonts in there. So I'm going to do shift um, T, which is the bigger font. And it's inserting this text box that's right here for me to use. And this might be like where I want students to type out their description whoop, of whatever this image is. And what's really great about Keyset and what's great about this particular keyboard um, is the fact that all of the text sizes and everything that's all been preloaded for you. So um, I might be like type your description here. And so now they've got something that they're having to do on this particular page. And again, it was pretty easy. I was just using some of the elements that were already here um, within the keyboard. So hopefully that explains this particular keyboard, the elements that are here, and different ways that you can potentially use them. Um, I hope that you guys enjoy this, and it kind of makes life at least a little bit easier um, during these trying times. Okay, I will see everybody later. Bye.